tea. Well, actually, I'm a coffee drinker, and I drink a lot of coffee. I have to warn everybody that by the time they've got up to st uh, start their day, I'll have had half a dozen cups of coffee already. And I usually drink it black and strong. But I do drink tea, and when it's tea, it has to be fragrant or aromatic, but only once a day. Coffee for all the rest of the time. Without it, I can't operate. My name is Leon Bosch and I am Dombey's professor here at Trinity Laban Conservatory of Music and Dance. Well, in addition to teaching at Trinity Laban, I lead what for my generation has come to be known as portfolio life, which means I do many, many other things. So in addition to my teaching responsibilities here, I also have a te private teaching practice. And then I have a career as a conductor and also as a chamber musician and also as a writer, and a broadcaster, and a publisher, and also many of my colleagues call me the Sherlock Holmes of the double bass, because I've spent my life trying to unearth lost and neglected music for the double bass. And all that keeps me very busy, but in a very interesting and satisfying way. It'd be impossible to name one highlight because I'm in a very fortunate position where my entire life has been a succession of highlights. But if I had to name things, what would I think of? The very first thing, as a musician of course, was my first professional concert with an orchestra. I sat next to my teacher, Zoltan Kovats, in the Cape Town Symphony Orchestra and played a program of Scarlatti, Beethoven and Caesar Franck. And I remember it well because Anne Keflick was the soloist in Beethoven III and the concert was televised. But I remember looking down and noticing that I was wearing one black sock and one blue sock and that really upset me terribly because I had this feeling that the cameras had focused on my socks. What else? It's always firsts. My debut as a soloist in the United Kingdom, I played my concerto debut with the Philharmonia and I performed Bottasini's Duo Concertant for Double Bass and Violin with Anthony Marwood. And I remember playing with Sir Charles Groves the great British conductor, and also with Pinker Zuckerman conducting the orchestra. And another highlight, well, as I said, my life has been a succession of highlights, but there's one particular thing which I have to mention. A 20-year-long highlight. My membership of the Academy St. Martin in the Fields. It's not an orchestra, it's a dream, it's a vision. And I spent 20 years travelling around the world with the Academy and Sir Neville Mariner and Iona Brown and Kenneth Sillito, and towards the end also with Joshua Bell. 20 fantastic years, and then my last concert as an orchestral musician was in the proms. The thing that I enjoyed most as a conductor so far was doing my first opera gala. I played opera from the pit and also concert versions of opera from the stage. But when I conducted my first opera gala in Mozambique, it was the most wonderful experience to be able to be in control of music, which I knew in a completely different way. It was a great education and the most exhilarating feeling. What more can one ask for? Music is something quite special. The double bass and I probably not don't name us as two separate entities. We're just one thing. If there's an instrument that is truly me, it is the double bass. And I discovered that, fortunately, quite early in life. I was a cellist, I started life as a cellist. But within a year of starting the bass, I just knew that the bass and I were meant to be together. If I enjoyed playing the cello, my relationship with the bass was a love affair that becomes more intense with every passing day. I've played the bass since I was 16 years old. And I'm going to be 60 soon. So you can do the mathematics, that's a very long time, decades. But I have to tell you, that every morning when I get up, the first thing I want to do is to play the bass, because I love it completely and utterly. I started this journey as much as an advocate for the underdog, which is the double bass, but also because of great love for the instrument. The sound is truly me. The instrument I play is truly me. It makes all the colours and does all the most beautiful nuances that I believe to be very part of me, the essence of me as a person. I don't necessarily have to speak when I have a bass in my hands, I just play. Teaching is an art, but it's also a responsibility. 
one has a duty to pass to the next generation the wisdom one has been privileged to acquire throughout one's life. And I first started teaching a very long time ago. As soon as I left music college, my first teaching appointment was to be the double bass coach for the Nosley Youth Orchestra in Liverpool. And I realised that I had to develop a reliable system for transmitting this information and knowledge and skill to other people, to other musicians. And that's when I began to develop what I think is a completely and utterly foolproof method of teaching. I've developed what I call my accelerated learning algorithm. It's a four-point recipe, in essence. I know that the word algorithm attaches very much just to technology, but in essence, an algorithm is a recipe. And I have a recipe which I use for my teaching, which is foolproof. Anybody will come to me and they will, by the end of their time, have achieved something quite significant, something they th probably thought they would never be able to do. But it is not just the algorithm that is important. I don't just teach technical mastery. I deal with a whole human being. So my students are as likely to receive a repertoire list as they are to receive a reading list. We work mechanically, we work intellectually, and we work also spiritually, because these things are connected, especially in music. There's an old saying attributed to Francis of Assisi, I think it was. A man who works with his hands is a labourer. Of course, a man or a woman. A man or woman that works with hands and brain is a craftsman. But a man or woman that works with hands and brain and the heart is an artist. And that's our challenge. And for me, that's what teaching is all about. I have to make sure that anybody that becomes my responsibility as professor has to, by the end of the journey, have attended to those three aspects of our humanity. I've travelled and taught all around the world. And I have to say that of all the institutions that I've come to know, Trinity Laban is probably one of the most progressive institutions anywhere in the world. Anything is possible. And I also have to say that, in my experience, successful students are those students who know what they wish to do, they know what they have to learn, they know where they need to go to learn this, they know which questions to ask of whom, and they also know how to implement the advice they've been given. At Trinity Laban Conservative of Music and Dance, everybody has the opportunity and also the encouragement to be able to develop completely and utterly without let no hindrance. Nothing is impossible. All it requires is for every student to have a dream and a vision and a commitment to fulfilling those. And I can assure you, my responsibility here as a professor is to make sure that you get the very best experience of life. And I can guarantee that you will be helped to fulfill your mission.